you have ever wondered how colorists achieve a rich, film-like saturation, you need to learn about a method called subtractive saturation. First, let's have a look at some examples. To get a little more analytical, let's have a look at a color chart. First things first, this is an unprocessed shot of a color chart. If I now add an instance of color wheels and increase the saturation, you can see we get this result. Let's save a still to the frame browser. We come back here in just a second. Next, I delete the color wheels and apply the density plugin. Before we dive into the individual controls of the plugin, let's first compare the results. So I will dial up the global density until we reach a similar saturation level. Somewhere around here. And you can see blue got so dense that it turned dark, so I'll turn down the blue density. Something like this. If we now have a look at this side by side, let's first compare one part that is not the actual color checker, namely the clamp up here. Have a look at how bright the clamp got with the saturation method and have a look at how dense the clamp got with the density method, hence the name. Let's investigate this a little further. If we pay attention to the primary colors and the secondary colors, you can see that they are much, much darker than in the saturated version. We can get this information from the Luma waveform. As you can see, blue, green, red, yellow, magenta, and cyan. And here we have blue, green, red, all the way down here, yellow, not quite as high, magenta, also not quite as high, and cyan. If we compare the waveform, you can see that all colors are on average darker than in the saturated version. This is because these denser colors are achieved by a method called subtractive saturation. The other way around, this now implies that classic saturation is additive. Let's investigate this a little bit more. I will go out of the full screen mode here and get the digital color meter. Let's go into the frame browser and select the unedited shot. Let's only work with the red chip because this one is the most obvious. So if I get my digital color meter, I can increase the aperture size so we can get a more averaged measurement. And let's sample this chart here. As you can see, red has a value of 149, green has a value of 56, and blue has a value of 47. Now let's pull up the still where we increase the saturation. As you can see, it got visually brighter, but Let's measure the colors. Now red has a value of 180, 52 and 38. What we need to take away from this is that saturation is just the difference in how far the red, green and blue values are apart. The further apart they are, the more saturated the color is. Because for example, what has no color? An area where the difference in the red, green and blue channel is practically zero. Let's have a look. If I move the digital color meter aperture down here into the gray part, you can see red, green, and blue almost have the same value. To reiterate, it is not important what the actual value of the red, green, or blue channel is. The difference in them is what makes the saturation. Let's now move the aperture of the digital color meter to the density version, into the red chip here. We can see that red has a value of 133, green 33, blue 16. This means instead of adding color, to increase the difference in the red, green, and blue, we take away. So even red got a little less, but more importantly, green and blue from the red area got reduced very significantly. To summarize, not the actual values themselves, but the difference in the red, green, and blue values is what makes the saturation. Additive saturation increases all values to increase the difference between them, whereas subtractive saturation or density removes them. Now that we know how this works, let's go through all the sliders and I'll show you how to work with the plugin. First, you need to define your color space. In my case, it's Rec709. Straight out of the box, the plugin assumes Rec709. 
However, if you're working in REC 2020, you need to change the value accordingly. Underneath, you have six vectors or six hues. The primaries, red, green, and blue, and the secondaries, yellow, cyan, and magenta. As you saw in the beginning, and as you just saw, if I increase the global density, you can see how blue becomes black because it gets so dense that there is no color information left. To counter this, I will reduce the blue density, like so. Even though you can alter the density of the vectors individually, I would recommend going global first and reduce what's overdone, as we just did. But still, you can adjust the vectors individually. You can increase the density of the reds or decrease the density of the reds. You can increase the density of the greens, decrease the density of the greens, or increase the density of blue or decrease the density of blue. When it comes to secondary colors, you might introduce color shifts. For example, if I increase the density of yellow, I can do so confidently until around 20, 25-ish, but any higher than that, and I will shift the hues. So this is something you should be aware of. In fact, this happens with all secondary vectors. Let's also try the cyan and the magenta slider. You can increase the density for cyan, or decrease the density for cyan. If you pay attention to the vector scope, you can see how the hues actually start to shift a little. Last but not least, we can increase the density of magenta or decrease the density of magenta. Since magenta is a secondary color that consists of blue and red, you need to work the blue and the red channels as well. So decrease the saturation in the blue channel and work a little bit with the red channel to counter this. This is why I recommend when working with this plugin to go global first, increase the saturation and just reduce what's overdone. For example, blue in this example. And I think we can reduce magenta also a little bit. And here we go. So can we say that one kind of saturation is better than the other? No, not really. Though we can say that dense colors are associated with film likeness and a natural feel, but this doesn't mean this is the superior method. It all depends on your aesthetic preferences, your personal style, and last but not least, on the video you're grading. Personally, I'm always chasing certain characteristics of film, and even if I don't use film emulation on a given project, I would still prefer density over classic saturation, because it allows me to pump an unholy amount of saturation into my grade, and all that without it feeling overdone or imbalanced. But again, this is just my personal preference. If you're in the Studio Collection or the Aesthetic Alchemy Bundle, you already have the density plugin. I added the plugin with the update in April. For everybody else, you can find the plugin on my website, the link is in the video description.